Hi everybody. So today I am painting this fun little hummingbird. You probably saw me paint the other day. And I'm using 140 pound, just a student grade paper, um, cold press. And then these are my swatches. So I'm using the My Ling palette today, um, which I think is a really great palette I've shared with you. Excuse the reflection there um recently and i think it's really good for beginners because it has um all of the colors already pre-mixed so mixing your colors sometimes can be a little bit intimidating so some of the colors i'm using today is their yellow and tree green here their emerald green their prussian blue their version of opera rose which uh, i believe they call matter red and then their ruby red and just a few of their browns uh, i think i've got here burned brown and sienna just to add a little warmth and if you like what i'm going to probably do after is just add some of these fun metallics to some of the wings i think could be pretty i did that here um, and I thought that was really pretty. So here's some of those pretty little metallics. Um, my metallic set is quite old, but I did find, uh, this is Art Philosophy, and I did find their link on Amazon, and I'm happy to share that with you down below. I'm going to be using, um, I think my 8 Princeton Velvet Touch brush. Uh, it's round. And um, so I think I'll use that. And then maybe for some of the tiny little details, to be honest, I don't even know what this brush is. It's not even marked, which is really interesting. Um, it probably came with a set or something. And then I'll maybe use this three Degato. These are all round brushes, but give me a little bit different size. Of course, um, Princeton Velvet Touch is always my favorite, but um, I only have an eight round, so um, that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to be working a lot today with the wet and wet, and um, I'm going to kind of guide you through that. So when we're using wet and wet, we want to make sure when I'm wetting my paper first, and wet and wet can be wet paint into wet water, or wet paint into wet paint. Um, but what we wanna make sure is we're not laying down puddles. So right now I'm just wetting my eight velvet touch and I'm kind of tapping it on the side of my jar. Make sure you have a, a wash jar and a rinse jar. And I've got my paper towel here, which I dab off quite often. And just with this damp brush, I'm going to go in around the eye and the head here. And I'm not sure if you can see this in the camera, but I'm just laying down a little base of water. It, there's no puddles, it's just shiny. And um, we don't want any puddles, we just, puddles. We just want this shininess. And this is really my favorite way to paint because I love how watercolors just blends. And a lot of times you can even let it um, kind of paint itself almost. So I'm going to go in first with this beautiful tree green and it's a tea-like consistency meaning, uh, you know, just enough water that I can move it around pretty easily. And before I go into my painting, I'm going to just either dab it off here, or if you think you might have some too much water, you can always dab on your paper towel. And then I'm just going to go in to the top of the head here with the tip of my brush. And now just let it spread, let it do its thing. Then I will go into with my, let's see, let's go in with our turquoise. I think that's a really pretty color. 
And again, I'm um, going in with that T consistency and a lighter value because we can always go darker. So I'm just adding a little bit more water then dragging my brush a bit. And now let's see if this is still wet. Okay, so this is drying a little bit, but that's okay. And I'm going to go into the top of his head while that's still wet because I want these to kind of blend in together. Something like that, okay? Now because I'm using a more inexpensive paper, I might have to go in and just re-wet this area a bit. Just like that. I want to save this little white spot here. So I'm not going to touch in too much there. But I will do that. So I think that's really, really pretty. Okay. So see how we're getting this beautiful blend here? That's what's so beautiful about watercolors. And one of the reasons why I just love painting with them. Next, I will go in with a little bit. I think we'll use some purple. Uh, let's see here. Again, with that tea-like consistency. Now I've got a little bit of a puddle there because of this paper isn't the best kind of running out of my paper too so just like that rinsing my brush and dabbing it off and then picking up a tiny bit more of that blue i just really want this beautiful blend here I just think that's so pretty. So I'm kind of letting it all blend. And what creates so much interest is this white spot. So I wanna make sure I keep that and I don't fill that all in. Same with these little white spots. Now, this is his eye, so I will keep that. And then just using a very light touch with the tip of my brush, so hold your brush straight up and down creating this very thin little beak line. Now, if this is too hard for you with a steady hand, you can always go in there with maybe a pen. I might just drag out some of that. Okay. I'm going to wet this area down here. Again, no puddles. Just like that. If I'm getting a little bit of puddling, I can go in there and just kind of pick some of it up with a little tissue. And let me go in there again and just make sure it's wet like that. Nice and shiny. There we go. Okay. Now I'm just going to tip in with my uh, bright blue again. And you can, again, dab it off if you think you might have too much water. So see, I actually did have a lot there. And I just want to touch into the tips. Something like that. And then just let it spread on its own. Isn't that pretty? I think that's really pretty. Just touching in with a little bit more paint. There we go. Okay, I'm going to rinse my brush and let's just go into the wings. So I will wet the wings. I'm not gonna go all the way down. I'm just kind of wetting the tips like that. And I will go in there with these same really pretty blue colors. And again, like I did with those bottom feathers, just letting it kind of blend itself. Just like that. So this wet and wet is so beautiful, I think. Look at that. It almost does its own thing. 
which is what I love. And you can just use the tip to kind of pull it down like that. Yeah, I feel like I want to add a little bit of that purpley color in there. So I'm just going to touch in, maybe add a little of that. Just barely, because I think that's such a beautiful color. There we go. Yeah, I think that's really pretty. Let me add in, see if this is wet. Yeah, I'm just going to dot in so it's still wet so I can get that blend. Maybe if yours is still wet, just touching in with that beautiful blue. Yeah, I think that's really pretty. My paper was pretty wet, so yeah, that's that's nice. Just going to touch in a few more areas. Look how pretty that is. Yeah, I like that. And then while that's wet, I'm going to actually grab my smaller brush, Whoop. my three Degato. And going to go in one more time with that blue and kind of touch in, just using the very tip. And this is for the most part dry. And I'm just ever so lightly pulling these down. They almost look like feathers, right? Isn't that pretty? I feel like I want to add some of that beautiful green, which is so funny, you guys, because I do not use that color normally. And I think what I'll do is just add in a little bit here and there. Again, I'm just pulling down, and that's probably it. I will add some in here. Let me just wet my brush a little bit and see if I can blend this out. Yeah. So I'm just using a damp brush, and I'm leaving a lot of white space in here because I want all of that interest. And then I'm taking barely the tip of my brush and that white, leaving a lot of white space. And I'm just flicking and pulling out some of that blue. Just like that kind of with these little flick marks. Yeah, I think that's really pretty. I'm going to go in now with this purple. I feel like I want the tips to be just a little bit darker. So I'm using this tiny, tiny brush and going into the tips of the wings. Now I'm going to rinse my brush and just go in and kind of push and pull some of that down, just to soften that edge. Yeah, that's really pretty. Sorry for my camera shake there. Um, and then let's go in and Add in a little bit of color into his little belly. Yeah, I like that. All right. And let's go ahead and let's see, what should we do next? Let's do his little head there. I want to add a little bit more 
of, let's see, we could go with some of that blue again. Oops, I don't want a French blue because that's not what we were using. Let's try, yeah. I'm just going to dot in tiny bits just at the top here. Just like that, yeah. And once that dries, I will go in and create that pretty little eye. I'm going to, and this is where I really just encourage you to kind of play. Let's just use our tissue and look at that, see? That's why I sometimes love tissue because it can create those highlights and things on its own. Now my brush back here. We'll go ahead and wet that back wing here. So I'm not wetting all the way down. Although we could touch in right there, just like that. And then I'm gonna go to the edges of this wing again, like I did. And just barely touching the tips, like that. There we go. I think that's really pretty. Yeah, I like that. Just using the tip of my brush, making sure you leave some of that white space there. I feel like I almost need to add in some darker little lines here. So let's go ahead and do that, maybe with the purple. Yeah, that's pretty. So it kind of matches up there. Yeah, I think that's really pretty. And again, just using those little flicking motions. Like that. Yeah, I think that's really pretty. And we'll go into here, although I think I'm going to use my thinner brush and pick up that purple. Ooh, that is pretty strong. So let's lighten the value by adding some water and then let's just tip in here. Same process we did over here. And then I'll go in and do that push and that pull technique. So rinsing my brush, drying it off so it's just damp, and then just tapping in and pulling a little bit. Because I don't like hard edges, so I like those edges to be rather soft. Now I'll go in and pick up a tiny bit more. Just tap in just on the edges, like that. I think that's really pretty. Yeah, I quite like that. And if this is dry, let's go ahead and go into our Prussian black. And create that little eye. Now always leave a tiny little white space. There we go. There you go. And I quite like this. Um, I think we're good here. I might draw down a little bit more. I wanna have a little bit more contrast. So what I might do is just with a damp brush, wet some of this. I don't wanna get rid of too much of this white because I rather like that. So what I'll do is I just got that a tiny bit wet and then I'm picking up a very light version of um, that purple 
and I'm just going to touch in a tiny bit there. Yeah. And let it kind of blend. Now I went out of the lines there. Not going to freak out about that. I might darken up his belly a tiny bit. So I'll get a darker value of that Prussian blue. And just go in and fix that line a tiny bit. There we go. Maybe go into his beak. Again, if this is too hard to get that fine line, you can always use a pen, a black pen. I hear a lot of people will do. So there we go. Yeah, I like that. I'm just going to add a couple tiny dots of this dark green. Let's see, which green was that? I think that was actually this blue. Right in here. Kind of let that spread out. Now I can tend to overwork, so I feel like I wanna stop right now. And if you've seen my other tutorials, I'm try, try to keep the back wing a little bit lighter since it's in the background and a little darker values of wing in the foreground here. We could even go in and darken up a little bit of that. Pick up my Prussian blue and that purple. I think that's really pretty and gives a lot of interest to kind of outline those a bit. Yeah, it kind of gives that fun depth. I don't know why I keep wanting to go back to this right here and just darken it up. Now you can definitely stop before me because I can sometimes tend to overwork my paintings because I just want to keep playing. But I think that's really pretty. Now I can't go in and do these metallics yet because it's wet and I don't want to ruin it. So I'm going to just kind of leave it as is. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's nice. I guess we could do a tiny little foot here. Hope that's what that looks like. A little foot. There we go. And you know, you really, if you really wanted to get detail-y, you could go in and add more lines. I'm not a huge detail person, so I tend not to do that. I think the last thing I'll do here is maybe just outline some of the, these little bottom feathers like that. I think that's really pretty. And I think I'm going to leave it at that. Now, as far as the background, I tend to leave my backgrounds white, but you could do some splatters here. You could have all kinds of fun. So some of the little tips are leave some white space that creates a lot of interest. And this is wet and wet, so make sure when you're lying, laying down your wet areas, they're not puddles. They're just um, damp and glistening, okay? And then use your tissues. That always can create a lot of fun little highlights that are pretty easy, all right? Okay, well, I hope you had fun with that, and I will list all my supplies um, down below, and I will also put this in digital format so you can purchase if you like. All right, thank you, everybody. See you soon.